This is a video to uh, just sort of showcase what made growing up in the 1990s probably the best experience that a, a young kid could have, especially the late 80s, early 90s. If you're an early millennial, you had the best childhood that any kid could ever have. And this is just one, let's call this Exhibit A. Uh, I went through a box of my old toys recently because my mom is moving so I had to go up in the attic and get a get my old toys out of there um, this is the first Mighty Max toy that we ever got me and my brother Scott who's three years younger than me um, Mighty Max was a, a series of toys that we spent cumulatively hours upon hours maybe days of our lives on the carpet playing with these toys so this looks pretty cool right it's a skull uh, the mouth can open Here, I'll show you guys all right so the mouth opens up so you can talk ah, who dares to challenge me I don't know whatever and you look it's kind of cool looking right the mouth looks like steps little stone steps leading up that's because flip this bad boy around this is a little playset isn't this gorgeous? Look at this. So you can open the mouth, and there's the steps leading up into, you know, Skull Castle or something. And, uh, there's this little area in here. Little moving parts, like a little lever here. You can move. This is beautiful. There's a little trap door here you can open up. Little steps leading down. Uh,. I love this thing up here. Look at this. This, uh, this little bookshelf flips around. It's a door. Secret door. Into a, a dungeon, apparently. This guy got left in there a little bit too long. Um, little up at the top here, there's a little uh, sitting room. Mad scientist sitting room. And the uh, protagonist of these little play sets was this little guy right here. Mighty Max. He had these little, this little impression where you could put his feet. Yeah, there we go. And he could just stand there. Or, you know, you could do, put him in, in tight spots. You get trapped on this torture rack right here. No, not Mighty Max. Why would you do that? He's just a little kid. Come on. Oh, I can't believe they're hanging him upside down like this. Oh, no. Don't flip the lever. That electrifies it. And, um, you know, this toy would have come with more than just Mighty Max. It would have come with some other figures. If I remember correctly, it had a mad scientist and it had, like, a monster. Like, you know, a Frankenstein-style monster cobbled together from dead bodies or something like that. But, as you can see, these little figurines are very small, and many of them became casualties over the years to our mother's vacuum cleaner. We would hear this dreaded clinking sound that could only be one thing. It was a little toy getting sucked up into the vacuum cleaner. And what made it so terrible is that we never knew who it was who had fallen on the carpet of battle against the, an enemy that none could defeat, the dreadful sucking maw of our, our mother's uh, vacuum cleaner. We would never know. We would just, at some point, we'd have to notice, like, hey, how come the guy is missing from this playset? You know, the monster or whatever. Uh, and then that's when we would realize, oh, that's who we heard getting sucked up that day. So, but, you know, a good thing about it is that it, it made it so that we... Um, definitely picked up after ourselves when you know we, we learned our lesson and we were very careful to put all our toys away when we were done give you a frame of reference um, I look on the back here I don't know if it's legible to you but it says uh, well for one thing it's upside down so that wouldn't be legible if you look on the back here it says copyright 1992 so this is a toy from 28 years ago this is a toy I, I would have played with when I was a six-year-old. <laughs> Man, I was like the luckiest six-year-old in the world. So that was the first one we got. Uh, 
Then we got one. My brother got one that he loved, and that's this one right here. I think the skull was given to me, and then, uh, you know, we usually did a pretty good job of sharing, but we were also kind of proprietary. So my brother had to have one that belonged to him. So he got this cool cat. Look at this thing. Like a saber-toothed cat from the caveman days. And the beautiful thing about this, you open it up, see the playset inside, and the teeth of the cat turn out to be the tusks of this woolly mammoth. Who's, he can come out, right? And charge around, patrol his territory. Max is in here. Here, let me put him in this little foot stand. Just trying to stay out of trouble. Mammoth is... Hopefully he doesn't notice you, Max. Looks like he's... Oh, no! He spotted you! Ah! Um, there's other cool stuff here. There's a, uh... These teeth can open up and there's a little trap down there. Here's another beautiful thing. Look at this rock shelving up here. It just opens up into a little caveman's haunt. This... This toy did come with a caveman, which is missing now. Um, but look at this, you've got the spinal column of a dinosaur here and you can connect it up to there. So as the as the series went on, as the toys became, I mean, these, this was like an instant hit. These toys were super popular. Let's see if I can put this back together. These, these toys were extremely popular, and as it went on, they kind of went in two different directions. So one direction they went in was to go small. So here's some that me and my brother got, where... Uh, I, we would always get these in sets of two, um, so that we wouldn't fight over who, you know, who got the... I don't know. But we would always get, <laughs> we would always get these in sets of two. They, they, in sets of two. They would come on Christmas, and we would, like, each get one. So here's one my brother got of a mummy. Right? And you open this up, and it's very, very small. It's a very small little one. The, the monster is built right into the toy, which is, the good thing about it is that it can't get lost. The downside is that, um, it's, you know, less fun to play with, because you can't move them around. But there's Max versus the Mummy. And then, that was, this is one my brother got. And then I got one that looked like a zombie. Look at that. Look at, look at how cool that is. I mean, I, I feel like you just couldn't even find a toy on the shelves that's this gnarly looking. Some, like, yuppie mom would complain about it or something, but you open this guy up, and there's the there's the zombie on the inside. It looks like he's in a sewer. I love the attention to detail they would put into, like, just a little... Every little square centimeter of the interior of these was designed, you know, to look like a little world. And there's, so there's Max versus the sewer zombie. So then the other direction that they went in was to get bigger. So, again, here's how they got bigger. This is the one that I got. This was the uh, uh, spaceship playset. I mean, it's so big, I can't even... Look at, look at, how, look at how nasty that is. It just looks so cool. And this little guy up top, this little pilot, if you turn him... He turns the, uh, the guns of the ship. This little hand kind of opens a little bit. You can trap somebody in there. Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. You open it up, and uh, there's this face up here, right? And then remember our little, our little buddy, the gun guy? Well, he also moves the eyeballs of this face so the eyes can... Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Here's a cool thing. So, on the bottom of the spaceship, there's this skeleton. And there's this little red button here that you can push. That'll... The ship is coming in the landing and it just drops the skeleton. Another cool thing about these toys is that the little figures, they would kind of just pop out of nowhere, like this guy right here. Wow! Turns out he's, he thought he was just the brain of that monster, but he's also some kind of little cyclops alien. Let's put him back in his little, little spot. We've got these little side wings here. This one has a, uh, a little, little spot on it with like a little gun. And that's 
where Max can stand. Let's put Max there. So here's Max standing on the little gun turret. You can turn him a little bit and he can shoot. And then this thing is also, turns out, don't fall over, Max. And then it turns out that this thing is also a hoverboard or some kind of hovercraft. You can fly around and shoot. We've got a, uh, this dragon here opens up a trap door, I would assume, down to the engine room of the ship. I don't know. Uh... And we do, I did actually save some of the figurines, so you already saw some of these guys survive. So this guy who sits up here, you saw him. Uh, but then we also had this little Cyclopean figure right here. Look at how beautifully they designed these little figurines. And this is very small, you know? I mean, look at how small that is, but then they put a lot of effort into the design. Maybe you can stand here and oversee the interior workings of the ship. Max can come and challenge him. Hey, why don't you set me free from this spaceship, you big bully? Because we are going to dissect you to learn the weaknesses of human beings from the planet Earth. Ah, oh, not if I have anything to say about it. No, that's how we would... Here's another one. Look at this beautiful little guy. Look at how well, just, that just looks so cool. Maybe this is the guy who works down in the engine room. Uh, looks like uh, we need uh, some more deuterium rods for the power converter. So this was the one I got, but I think the one that my brother got was even cooler. You know, I'll put this little ship back before I close this up. Look at this guy. Look at that beast. Look at him. He can, uh, he's got a mouth that he can open and close. I think, you know, you see you, he's just got these hollow eyes, but I think that there was something that would go inside of his mouth here that would be the eyes of this character. You know, Max fits in there, so he could be Max in the jaws of the beast. So you've got his legs open up, and there's little cavities inside. That could be like a little prison where Max could go, I don't know. Don't leave me in here. Uh, this one, here we go. Let's open it up and see that there is a creature living in there. Look at this guy comes out. This is the lava monster that lives inside of the magma man. Look at how beautiful this little figurine is. It's just probably out of focus. But that's gorgeous. He lives down in, in this cave, I guess, in the leg of the magma creature. Uh, you can open up the arm yeah, to discover that what appears to be a claw is actually a dragon and the, the claw part is like the wings of the dragon uh, this is um, there used to be a missile that would shoot out of his uh... I think this goes to a different guy but here's a missile with like a little fist on it which kind of makes sense but I actually don't think it fits but there's a little spring in there and you could spring load this Little magma coming out of his leg here. Pop open the leg. Open up his chest right here. And he got down this little thing. Max can stand on this thing and fly around. Or a bad guy can. Doesn't have to be Max. I feel like that'd be more of a, a ride for a bad guy. I'm coming for you, Max! Ah! Everything opens up. Head opens up. 
chest pops out. There's a little lava hoverboard. A bad guy can fly around on. His back opens up. There's this thing pops out. This thing opens. There's a little little area down here where you can stand. Magma man. There was a Mighty Max cartoon show also, which I watched as a kid. Very well written for a kid's cartoon, as a lot of kid's cartoons in the 90s were. I've seen some YouTube videos incorrectly saying that the toy line was based on the cartoon show. It was actually the reverse, and that was really common back when I was a kid. So the Mighty Max toys came out first, and then they created the cartoon show based off the toys. The same thing was true with G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe was a toy line first, then it was a cartoon show. Uh, Transformers was a toy line first, then it was a cartoon show. So it was pretty common back then to have the toys come out first and then the cartoons come out based on the toys, even though that you would think it would be the cartoon show first and then the toys. But that's not how it worked with Mighty Max. Great cartoon. So, yeah, that's Mighty Max. Kind of a window into into my childhood. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. So that way, when Max is being menaced by the mammoth, here, here he comes. Run away, Max! Just climb the climb the dinosaur spine. Just climb up there, buddy. That's it. That's how you. Oh, you can't get him up there, can you, Mr. Mammoth? Idiot. Now what are you going to do? Oh! Oh no! He's just, he's, he's shaking the whole thing!